Hi this is Manoj Yadav and you are watching Mechanotherapy. So guys today we will discuss some very important facts about forces. So whenever we talk about force we generally have a perception in mind that a push or a pull is force. That is not the exact definition of a force. Pull and push are just the types of forces. So a force can be defined as an external agency or external cause that changes or tries to change the shape and position of a body so this is the exact definition actually this is not necessary that the, when the force is applied the body must move or uh, must change its shape so that's why here it is very important to mention that force is an external cause that changes or tries to change the shape and position of a body so this is the definition of force now forces may be of pull or push type pull force is called tensile force and push force is called compressive force okay so whenever we stretch uh, something by applying force on both sides this is called tensile force and when we compress something it is called compressive force now when we talk about force we must know about the characteristics of force characteristics are those properties with help of which we can identify some someone so force also have some characteristics first one is magnitude second direction third point of application and fourth line of action so these are four characteristics of force now whenever we uh, make some equations of forces then we have to assume some sign convention whether uh, this force is to be taken as positive or is to be taken as negative so we will now uh, see the sign convention of force forces which are horizontal and are working in positive x direction they are taken as positive and which are in negative x direction they are taken as negative similarly the vertical forces which are acting upward they are taken as positive and the forces which are acting downward they are taken as negative so this is the sign convention of forces now uh, we will discuss the types of forces forces are generally of two types one is coplanar forces and another one is non coplanar forces so the forces which lie in a single plane or in the same plane they are known as coplanar forces and the forces which lie in different planes they are known as non coplanar forces now coplanar forces are of four types first one is collinear forces you can see in the diagram the forces whose lines of action lie in same straight line they are known as collinear forces now now the direction of forces may be uh, same or may be different but the line of action will remain in a same straight line so these type of forces are known as collinear forces a simple example of collinear forces is string which we use in tug of war then we have concurrent forces the forces whose lines of action meet at a common point they are known as concurrent forces now the third one is parallel forces the forces whose lines of action remain parallel to each other and they never meet on extending they are called parallel forces now parallel forces are of two types like parallel forces and unlike parallel forces see whenever uh, the direction of both parallel forces is same they are known as like parallel forces and if the direction of parallel forces is different then they are known as unlike parallel forces now the last one is non concurrent non parallel forces as the name implies the forces whose lines of action are neither parallel to each other nor they meet at a common point they are known as non concurrent non parallel forces so uh, two uh, forces may 
meet at a common point but all the forces 3 4 5 6 all the forces doesn't meet at a common point neither they are parallel to each other that's why they are known as non concurrent non parallel forces now after forces we will uh, study about resultant of forces so the very important thing is to define the resultant first so whenever a number of forces are acting on a body the body must have some net effect so if we remove all those forces and instead of all those forces we apply a single force which has the same effect which all the forces were creating together then the single force is known as a resultant of all other forces so this is the exact definition of forces now for finding out the resultant of various types of forces we generally use two methods one is graphical method and another one is analytical method so uh, let's take uh, example of uh, two concurrent forces whenever we have to determine the uh, resultant of two concurrent forces we use the law of parallelogram now the law of parallelogram states that if two concurrent forces acting at a point can be represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a parallelogram then the resultant will be represented by the diagonal of that parallelogram passing through that point you can see in the diagram we have two forces p and q they are acting at an angle alpha when we draw the parallelogram that is we draw uh, ac parallel to ob and bc parallel to oa and complete this parallelogram then the resultant is given by the diagonal of this parallelogram that is oc mathematically uh, we have the formula for resultant r equal to under root p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos alpha where p and q are the two different forces which are acting an, at an angle alpha now the direction of this resultant force is given by this formula tan theta equal to q sin alpha upon p plus q cos alpha then we have a very uh, interesting law which is known as law of triangle law of triangle states that if three forces acting at a point can be represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a triangle taken in order then they will be in equilibrium that is their resultant will be zero so this is uh, called the law of triangles now if we have a number of uh concurrent forces and we have to find out the resultant of a number of concurrent forces then we apply the law of polygon you can see in the diagram we have forces uh, p q r and s acting at different angles now for finding out the resultant we will use law of polygon the law of polygon states that if a number of forces acting at a point can be represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a polygon taken in same order then their resultant will be the closing side of polygon taken in opposite order so first of all we assume a scale and we draw a line parallel to and equal to the magnitude of p the point where p ends from that point we will draw uh, q then r and then s in this way we will draw all the forces which are acting at the point now the some space is left in between the final point and initial point if we close this side or if we close this space then this space gives you the resultant of all these forces this is called the law of polygon now a very important law which is called law of transmissibility of forces the law of transmissibility of forces states that if a force acting at a point on a rigid body is transmitted to some other point on same line of action then net effect of the force on the body remains unchanged you can see in the diagram we have a force acting at point a of a rigid body on same line of action we have another point b 
now if we apply two equal and opposite forces f and f at point b the system will not affected now f at b and f at a will cancel out each other and finally we will get force f at point b so this law states that a force acting at a point can be uh, transmitted on same line of action and there will be no effect of the force on the body this is called law of transmissibility of force